China has launched its first lunar rover mission as the Chang'e three lunar probe blasted off from Xichang Satellite Launch Center in southwest China. Currently, the probe has entered the Earth-Moon transfer orbit as scheduled. Zhang Jiazhong is the director of the launch center in Xichang. Chang'e three lunar probe has already entered the designated orbit. Chang'e three lunar probe has already entered the designated orbit. Chang'e three lunar probe has already entered the designated orbit. I now announce the launch is successful. This is the first time China has sent a spacecraft to soft land on the surface of an extraterrestrial body and conduct surveys on the moon. CRI's Cao Yuwei has more. The successful launch of the Chang'e three lunar probe is believed to be a major milestone in China's space industry. The lunar probe is expected to land on the moon in mid-December if everything goes according to plan. Chang'e three includes a lander and a moon buggy named Yu Two. Yu Tu, which means Jade Rabbit, is a reference to the pet rabbit of Chang'e, a goddess of the moon in Chinese folklore. Scientists will aim to carry out soft landing, and the buggy will rove around on the moon's surface. The tasks for the rover include surveying the moon's geological structure and surface substances while looking for natural resources. Shi Lu Hua, senior engineer at the Aerospace Command and Control Center in Beijing, says they will also test deep space communication technologies. We can receive information about the rover's working conditions. Secondly, we can also receive image data, that is to say, information about the surrounding environment gathered from taking images and other perception. And we use this information to send orders to control its function. The Chang'e three mission is the second phase of China's lunar program, which includes orbiting, landing, and returning to the Earth. In 2007, China launched its first moon orbiter, the Chang'e One, which took images of the surface and analyzed the distribution of elements. Scientists have discussed the possibility of sending a man to the moon sometime after 2020. China successfully completed its latest manned space mission in June when three astronauts, including a woman, spent 15 days in orbit and docked with an experimental space laboratory. So far, only the United States and the former Soviet Union have soft landed on the moon. For CRI, I'm Tao Yu Wei. For more information on the ground, we are now joined live by our reporter Su Yi, who is currently in Xichang. Su Yi, can you hear me? Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Su Yi. Great to hear your voice, my friend.、Uh, le- let me ask you: How did the whole launch process go?、Uh, what were the major challenges facing the launch? And、I just came back from the launch site at four this morning, and my photographer colleague is still in sleep. So, pardon me for using a lower voice.、Mm. So,、uh, let me talk about the launch.、Uh, you know, I covered the Shenzhou Nine mission at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center two years ago. I guess this time it's very different. At that time, both the launch pad and my observation spot are in the middle of the Gobi Desert.、Mm. While、well, this time I was in the building of the Land Control Headquarters, where the launch commander announced the countdowns and also pressed the ignition button. Basically, I stood in the middle of rocket engineers. I can totally feel the pressure atmosphere、mm. in the control center. Especially in the first, in the, in the final half an hour before the launch, and everyone was focusing on the computer screen and follow the parameters.、Uh, you know, I can almost hear the sound of people's heartbeat <laughs> and breathe at, at the final few moments before the launch. And also, you know, there are some spectators at the back of the control room. When the spectator heard the sound of the blast off. Uh, they just storm out of the building or run onto the roof to catch a glimpse of the trail of the rocket.、Uh, and when the rocket flies higher and higher and eventually disappear, they once again storm back into the room and try, try to catch every single move of the rocket on the big screen. So I guess rocket launches do have a magic power, and it's definitely one of the most splendid things I've ever seen. And talking about challenges. Of course, the rocket launch is success. It's a success. So, so I want to focus、uh, on the challenges waiting ahead for the Chang'e 
uh, Moon Orbiter and the Yu-2 Moon Rover. Uh, of course, we know it will take half a month for Chang'e 3 to reach the moon and carry out the country's first space soft landing. Then, I guess, the first challenge comes because the soft landing is not easy. Uh, if the orbiter flies too fast, it may just smash on the surface of the moon. But if it flies too slow, then it may become a satellite of the moon and will never reach the surface. So you can imagine it needs ex- exquisite techniques of uh, trajectory corrections. Well, the second challenge is how to land softly. Of course, it cannot just bump onto the surface. So the Chang'e 3 is equipped with some thrusters to give it some thrust force once it gets near the surface to slow it down. At the same time, the orbiter needs to find the best landing place by itself with the help of the land control. Well, the third challenge, uh, as, as we know, we can only imagine for the U-2 moon rover because uh, the, the, the surface of the moon is very cold. So scientists uh, have talked about the difficulties for the U-2 to survive the low temperature of the moon and also maintain all its research facilities functional. Well, it certainly sounds extremely exciting, Su Yi. Um, I, you've shared with us a little bit of the background stories. Do you have any other uh, story from behind the scenes you can share with us? Yeah, I have a quite a few touching stories. Uh, the first thing is from what I saw last night. It is a surprise, at least for me, that almost one-third of the engineers working for last night's rocket launch are young people, probably at my age or mm or probably younger than me. Another astonishing number I want to share with our audiences is that the engineers told me that at least 80% of them live separately with their families. They live and work here, with, uh, and probably their spouse lives in another place, and, cho- and their children in another place, probably for better education. So they told me some stories probably uh, maybe when their families come to the center for their once-a-year reunion. But unfortunately, those engineers are doing some important projects, so they cannot even spare one day for the reunion. So their loved ones just wait and wait and they'll, until they cannot wait anymore, and they just leave with a regret or even a broken heart. So, so I want to say thanks to all those Base engineers and scientists who gave great sacrifices for this country's space program. They are the true heroes. Yes, certainly. They, uh, the dedication of the Chinese scientists is, is certainly profound. Well, thank you very much, Su Yi. That was our reporter, Su Yi, from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center.